what's going on everybody this is al from playbookgamer.com and i am back with another video to our ncaa football 06 recruiting guide the first video we covered preseason recruiting we selected our 12 prospects we set up our roster a little bit and anything else that we touched that affected recruiting that's what we looked at well today we are going to cover in season recruiting and it's this is more of the basics of in season recruiting sort of like how it works as opposed to me going into super in-depth strategy and to be honest there's not a lot of true in-depth strategy for in season recruiting but i'll try to cover anything that i can and if i forget something or if i need to create a video specifically on a certain strategy like how to distribute points and such i can do that but just so you know, this video is all about just the basics of in-season recruiting. Now, before we get into the video, make sure you use the timestamps for this video because I do not know how long the video is going to be, but I'm guessing it's going to be quite long. So I'll try to put some timestamps in there so you can navigate the video at your convenience. So let's dive into in-season recruiting. Now, what I'm going to do for this video is we're still with our Pitt Panthers. We started our dynasty. And if we go to play week, what I'm going to do is cover an entire season of what in-season recruiting looks like. We are currently in week two. In week one, we selected our 12 prospects. Now, week two going forward, this is where we actually recruit these prospects. So I'm going to go through every single week up until the very end, wherever that's going to be, where we don't have any more players to scout or to recruit and to get to commit. So that's the plan. So let's jump right into it. Let's go back to end season recruiting. And this is our end season recruiting board. This is what it's going to look like going forward for the rest of the season. So let's start off at the very top. And anything above this line right here, we have already looked at. It's just information about the players that I'm highlighting. I'm going down this list. It's just their information, tendency, height, weight, all that good stuff. It's everything below that is what we're going to look at today and then some. So let's start off with everything from left to right. Let's just go here. Now, we got our player names. That's self-explanatory. We got the position for each player. And we have interest level and this little arrow sign right there. The interest level and arrow sign, that's just currently the interest level of that prospect towards your school. And the arrow right here this will go up or down or stay the same depending on how you go up and down their list and we'll check that list here in a minute the next thing we will look at is percentage points now this column right here is reflective of this number right here this is how in season recruiting works it's percentage recruiting points remaining so you have a hundred points to play with you know here are our 12 prospects you just put however many points you want to on somebody and if you notice i went nine right here and those nine points were taken away with that number so you got again 100 points to play with now the one strategy area that comes to mind with nc's recruiting is how you distribute your points there are a lot of ways to go about doing it i'm going to cover three that i've used over the years there are several other ones there's really no right or wrong way to do it but I'll at least cover some of the basics. But before we do that, let's look at the rest of the screen. You got a few other options. You got right here, prospect information. That's very important. We can look at that right now. You select X and it goes to the player that I highlighted just before, James Thomas, a cornerback. And what this will show you is everything above, you know, the line right here is going to be information we already know about. It's everything below that's what we want to pay attention to. So this little sentence right here, this kind of reflects what the pitches are in a sense. I never really pay attention to this because there's more important information regarding this. But it says he has respected you as a coach for quite some time, which is pretty cool. So let's talk about that. If you go all the way down here, the very bottom, there's pitch feedback. This is how a player response to your school it's by pitches so it's a circle button you got to remember you got to hold down the button now let's look and see what we're dealing with here this is the pitch feedback screen there are six pitches in the game that a prospect is going to really like or really not like or just something in between 
what we notice here is a plus arrow. This is a great sign. That means he really loves one of your pitches. So let's read this. He has respected you as a coach for quite some time. I can go ahead and tell you that's coach prestige. There's program prestige, coach prestige, playing time, location, academics, and maybe something else. There may only be five. Forgive me if I don't know him right off the bat. The reason why I don't know him right off the bat is it's not so much important that we know about it right now is that we're going to look at the rest of the season and you're going to see the rest of those but that plus sign means he really loves your pitch sometimes you're going to see a negative symbol right there it'll be a red dash that means he does not like your pitch whatsoever but anytime you have a positive pitch that means you got a really good chance of landing that kid all you got to do is keep putting rec recruiting points on him until he comes and visits but this is what the pitch feedback screen looks like over the course of the season it will populate over time. That way you have enough information to go by. We have lucked out for this particular player here because he has already told us, hey, I really like this pitch. And that's all you need to know going forward. You're never going to come across a prospect that has both a positive and a negative pitch. It's going to be one or the other or just something in between. It's just not going to have a, a symbol there whatsoever. So that's what the pitch feedback screen looks like. Now the rest of this... We have a bunch of attributes. This is all the player information that you're going to know. 40 time, that's related to his speed rating. Field awareness, that his awareness rating. Then he got vertical, that's the jump rating. Hands, that's the catch rating. Bench press is strength. And squat does a little bit of everything. Squat, it's your break tackle and run blocking for offensive players. And for defensive players, it's the tackle rating. So squad is a super important. It affects a lot of different things. Then you have potential and discipline. You notice that they're blank right now, and that is because we just don't have that information readily available to us. When the time comes, when we get that info, I'll talk about that a little bit more. So let's look at the rest of this. Now, over here on the far right, it's the top eight schools that are going after this kid that he is interested in. You see us down here, it looks like we are quote-unquote sixth place. But that bar and that arrow is exactly what we just saw earlier on the previous screen. So over time, that list will narrow down from eight down to five, down to three. And once he gets a three, we will see him wanting to take a visit, which we'll cover once we start seeing some of that. Okay, so that is the prospect information screen. Everything else, we know about the team overview screen and the help screen. Help, it's just... It just gives you the button presses on how to navigate this particular screen. And then you got the team overview screen, which we have talked about quite a bit in the previous video. Now, at this point, you just have to decide how you're going to distribute your points. So there are essentially three ways I like to distribute points. Again, there is no right or wrong way to really do this. This is just my way of doing it. It's not the way. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I just wanted to give you and share with you the kind of the ways I like to do this. The first one is, do you want to go after a little bit of everybody? You know, we just selected 12 prospects. We do this because we like the idea of maybe getting every single one of them. That'd be pretty cool. If you want to do that, you can distribute points evenly. So you can go eight points if you take, and I can go ahead and use my little screen here, my little illustrator. If, you know, we got 100 points to play with, if you divide that by 12, because that's the prospects, amount of prospects we have, that comes out to like roughly eight points each with a couple points to spare. So if you just go eight across the board, eight across the board, so on and so forth, then over time, you could just kind of see how those numbers uh, will affect that player. So let's talk about how those numbers affect the player. So we're up here at the very top of Daniel Glover the defensive end, we're going to go back to his prospect screen. And you notice we're number two on his list. Now, in order to move up or down this list, you need to do two things. You need to win ball games, and you need to put enough points on a player. So the question becomes, how do we know how many points to put on some of these players? The, question, the answer is you really don't. We have no clue how many points Penn State is going to put on this kid. Nor Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, Iowa, whoever. We just don't have a clue. So you kind of have to guess and you have to hope that our number, let's say we put 15 points on this kid, 
is higher than the rest of these other ones. Hopefully, this, Penn State only puts 10, Virginia 10, Notre Dame 12. As long as we're higher, we'll probably go up his list, and you have to win your ball games. So those are the two big factors. Yes, it helps the royalty number two on his list, but again, it just comes down to winning ball games and putting enough points on players. So now you're probably asking yourself, if, if I'm going to distribute points evenly, put up eight for everybody, I know I'm going to be hurting myself for some other players because I know eight may not be enough. Again, you're just playing a guessing game at this point. So let's talk about why I may choose to spread my points out or to really hone in on three to four players, that type of thing. There are three strategies I like to use. It just depends on how many players I have. The first one is I'm only going to go after like one or two players or maybe one to three. If I'm going after one to three players, if you divide that by 100, you're talking 33 to 50 points per player. That is a ton of points to put on a, on a player, and I guarantee you there's no other school going to put that much attention on a kid. For those of you who have been watching my Hawaii Dynasty the last couple of weeks or the last couple of di uh, recruiting classes, especially in season, I've been using this method because I just don't have a whole lot of players or a lot of spots to fill. So I'm okay with just really honing in on a couple of different guys. The next one is if you go after, I don't know, four to six, that equals out to roughly about 20 to 25 points for each one. So that's like a middle of the road. If you just really like about five to six guys you really want, then you may want to just do 20, 20, 20 across the board, what have you. The other one I use is the one we just talked about at the very beginning, which is just spread them all out. Like, I'm going to go after all 12, and we'll just see what happens. That's where you just put about eight points on each one and just see what goes on afterwards. So how I decide which one of these I will go with is based off pretty much one number. Let's look at that number. The team overview screen, we hold that button down. This number right here is the number I'm, I'm concerned about. In NCAA Football 06, you have a max of 70 players you can have on one team per season. Well, if you divide that by four, because we got one two, three, and four classes. That means roughly each recruiting class is going to be an average about 17 and a half kids, not 25 like the scholarships that you are given every season. Yes, this game gives you 25 scholarships to play with, which I'm glad they do because there'll be some times where you really need to load up that many players. But on average, you're going to be looking at every recruiting class with that around that number as opposed to 25. Okay, so again, let's look at this number 51. Since we have a max of 70 players we can have on a team, and it looks like we only have 51 players roughly coming back next season, 51 minus 70 gives you 19. So that 19 is higher than 17 and a half. So this is going to be a little bigger of a class than what I normally go after, for the most part. Since I need a lot of bodies, that means I think I'm okay with going after a bunch of kids out of the gate, which means I can do the eight-point spread across the board. Or maybe if I really just love five guys, I, I may go the five-guy route. Otherwise, it'll be the eight across the board. There are Again, there are a ton of people who have their own methods. Some people are real big on, hey, if I'm number one on his list, he's going to get more points for me. Or if I'm at the bottom of the list, like this kid right here, we're like in sixth place for him. I may not go after him. I may not put as much points on him because I feel like I'm already caught behind. In my opinion, initially in week two, none of this matters to me. I don't care where I'm at. I care where I'm going to be. Again, it all matters if you win ball games and you just put a, pun, a ton of points on players. That's the biggest thing. you got to show them attention. So, again, I don't really care about where we're at on this point. I've had guys where we were dead last. We were in a spot at the beginning of a season, and I was able to get them to, to commit. So, again, to me, none of this matters. For you, it might. You do your own thing. Okay. So, let's just go ahead for now, and let's just pretend we'll do the eight-point spread across the board. Now, I know I can't show scenarios for all three of these. I may do a separate videos just for those three. But for now, let's just look at our prospects before we distribute our points, before I decide, I make that decision. Okay, so here's Daniel Glover, defensive end, five-star player. We're number two on his list, which, again, that doesn't mean a ton to me, but it's good that that's a bit of a head start for us at least. 
let's just pretend I like what I'm seeing here. Now, you got to remember, I'm going to do separate videos on how to recruit certain positions anyways. But let's just pretend I really like this kid. So I think I may at least put eight for now, and we'll just see what happens. Okay. Josh Davis, four-star middle linebacker. Hey, it's pretty cool. Right at the top of his list, that gives us a bit of a head start. And I like his stats, his attributes. So let's go ahead and put eight on him for now. Quarterback, Jeff Rogers. I really love his arm. And guess what? Right at the top of his list again, that's really good too. So I really like this kid. I'm going to give him at least a chance of going after him. And we could go back to our team overview screen, and it looks like we do need quarterbacks. If you go to middle linebacker, we need, uh, technically, we don't need any, but it's always good to have extra ones, so I don't mind going after him. So let's pretend this defensive tackle. Again, I may look at this guy and say, you know what, maybe I just don't want to bother going after him. I may not recruit him at all. He's a top 50 player. That may sound really dumb not going after him. But let's just pretend I don't want to for whatever reason. Okay, so I'm going to put zero on him. So when we already got one guy with not going to get any points, that means we got extra points to fill for somebody else. We will do that at the end of the list, though. So here's this James Thomas. Now, again, some people are very reliant on this interest level uh, being a big thing. For me, again, it's not. Being a sixth place means nothing to me personally. The biggest thing is when I go to this pitch feedback, we got a positive pitch there. Now, one thing I can show you really quickly, we can go back to the defensive end here, Daniel Glover. No negative or uh, positive pitch. It's just program prestige is not one of his major concerns. That means he doesn't like it. It means he doesn't hate it. It's just there. It doesn't really impress him that much. But at least we got a little feedback on one of those pitches, which, again, is program prestige. We can go back here to Josh Davis, the middle linebacker. He doesn't care if he has to redshirt next year. That is a playing time. Uh, pitch. It's a not a negative. It's not a positive. It's just there. We're looking for the negatives and the positives. Okay, but I'll still recruit him for now. Jeff Rogers. It doesn't appear that he's too worried about education, so he does, that tells me he doesn't care about the academic prestige. But it's not a negative or positive. But at least we got some information there. I'll continue to recruit him. So Craig Wade. We already decided not to go after him. Here we don't even have any feedback on any of his pitches. But we're not going to recruit him anyways. James Thomas, we're at the bottom of his list. But, again, that doesn't mean much to me. But it's a huge deal that he really likes one of our pitches, which happens to be uh, Coach Prestige. So we'll definitely put points on him for now. I'll, I'll do a minimum of eight. We can look at this halfback. I kind of like the look of this kid. You know, I like his stats, all that good stuff. We're kind of high on his list, which, again, just gives us a little head start. And we don't have any pitch feedback yet. But what you can do is go back to your team overview screen and say, hey, unless that halfback is special, I may not go after him because we got a lot of halfbacks, and I don't know if he'll ever get to see the field much. So let's pretend I'm just not going to be interested in him because of that reason. Okay? Again, there are 18 million scenarios you can go about doing this, and it's impossibly impossible for me to cover them all in one video. But at least I'm showing you how the... Uh, in season recruiting works. So let's go to center. Uh, Chaz Bryan looks like we're in a pretty good spot there. I like his size, his strength is pretty good, that type of thing. And near or far, he doesn't care about school location at all. That's the location pitch. He just doesn't care enough about it. But at least it's not a negative or a positive. So uh, let's do we need a uh, do we need a center? I think we need a center. So let's definitely put eight points on him. I hit the wrong button. We'll go back to him. We'll put eight here for now. Let's look at this right guard. Looking pretty good here. We're kind of high on the list. That gives us, again, a little head start. Uh, you look at his little sentence there. He said he has heard of you, but he hasn't really followed your career. And that's exactly what the pitch feedback says. But it's not a negative or a positive. But at least we got something to go off of. And sometimes you'll see on that little sentence, it'll say, this guy had 100 yards passing on the day. Now, this guy is a guard. I know that's not the case for him. But you kind of get what I'm saying. But again, I don't really don't pay much attention to that line anyways. Do we need a guard? We can go back and look just to make sure. I mean, we could probably go after him. But let's pretend I don't like him because maybe I don't like his size. 273 is too small for me or whatever. I think I'm going to just bypass on him. And we're going to spend those points somewhere else. Okay. Let's do defensive tackle. And uh, the, I like the look of this guy. We don't have any pitch feedback, but that's okay. So here's a good example. He had eight tackles and three sacks in his last high school game. That's cool, but that means nothing to us in terms of recruiting. But let's just pretend I really like him, so we'll go eight points here. Now, you got to remember, I could go the eight points across the board 
or I can just do a little bit extra, kind of what I'm doing here, and just not bother going after a couple of kids. It's up to you how you want to do it. There's, again, no right or wrong way. We do need a fullback. If you go back to our team info screen, we got fullback. We have literally one on the roster, and we're running like a balanced offense where we need at least two on the field or on the roster at all times. So let's look at this guy. Let's pretend that I need a, a fullback that can run a little bit. I'm like, okay, I think I like this kid. So let's go ahead and we can go after him, and we can look at his pitch feedback. Again, location doesn't mean much to him, but I don't mind putting eight on this guy. Here's another fullback. Let's just pretend I just think he's not smart enough or whatever. I, or it could be anything. Something may just change my mind to me not want to go after that guy. We're high on his list, so we may have a chance to go after him. He's a local kid. But let's just pretend I don't want to go after him, so let's just not put points on him. And last but not least, we got a quarterback, and we finally get to see what his arm looks like. But let's just pretend I don't like that arm strength. I just don't care enough about it. We can look, and we got one pitch in, but we just don't know. It's just nothing special. It's not a positive or a negative. I'm already going after one quarterback I really like of the two. I really like this Rodgers kid. So I'm not going to put points on him. So again, I could go eight points across the board, but if I'm looking at this kid and I don't want him after looking at his attributes, there's no point in me putting points on the guy. So as of now, we got a lot of points to spare. So we are only going after two, three, four, five, six. We're going after seven players. Again, I could put eight across the board and figure it out, or I can go after four guys, six, whatever. The big thing for me is that number 51. I know this class is going to be kind of decently sized, so I'm going to just go after those. Now, some people bypass recruiting all the NCs, recruiting all together. I think I may do a separate video on how to do house rules and restrictions because you can kind of get away with some things in NCs recruiting. But that's for another video for another topic. So we got 44 points to spin out of seven guys. That is, what, roughly six points across the board. So let's just go, I'm going to go 15 for everybody. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Some people are very picky of if I'm in third place for that guy, I have to put 10 points on him. I mean, you do you, but I'll just show you kind of the ways I like to do it. We got nine points. I may have to do something like this. 12 and 13, and that, that's okay. Let's just pretend that's our distribution for now, and we'll just see how it goes heading into the next week. So we are done with this week for recruiting. So all you have to do is go back, and you actually start playing your games. You win a bunch, and you're, you should go up these guys' list. And if you lose, you'll probably go down. If you come across a bye week since you didn't play, that hurts recruiting. Just little stuff like that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go to week three. Now, you got to remember, I'm going to simulate all this. I'm kind of at the mercy of the results. So I'm, hopefully, I can show you some good examples of some things. But if not, we'll figure that out later on. So let's simulate week two and go to week three. So here we are in week three. Looks like we won our first game. We beat Notre Dame 24 to 21. That should help us a little bit in recruiting. So let's go back to end season recruiting and see what the damage is. So you notice a couple of different things. First of all, let me get my little arrow out. You notice that we have some interest arrows going up and down. This makes sense. So for example, this defensive tackle, we went down his list because it's pretty obvious we decided not to go after him. We didn't move anywhere with this defensive end or the middle linebacker or this quarterback. But we can look at each one and see what we've done. Okay, so let's click on Daniel Glover. Nothing really changed, so either the 15 points that we put on him is just fine for now, or we just haven't played enough games yet, or he just hasn't made up his mind what he wants to do. It's just kind of up to you how you want to go about doing that. Now, you can look here and see Penn State's got a big of a leg up on us. If you're just dead set on having to get this kid, maybe you need to increase his points to try to compensate for Penn State. From what we could tell, 15 is at least good enough to stay at number two. So let's just leave it there for now and see what happens. Now, what, while we're here, we can look at the pitch feedback. Nothing new has happened. I don't even remember if we had that program prestige there. I think we already it was already sitting there. The biggest thing is I don't see a positive or a negative pitch anywhere. So we can move on to the next player. What I normally like to do is come out of here. Now, what you can do when you're in the prospect info screen, you can hit the up or down arrow to go back and forth to some of these players. It's a little bit easier for me to just go back here because I like to look at the big picture view. So let's look at this middle linebacker, Josh Davis. We stayed at number one on his list. So this 
arrow right here will probably never change unless for whatever reason Ohio State or Michigan or Penn State really jump us. And then we'll go down because of that. Biggest thing is we're still at the top of his list, so I'm okay with kind of where we're at. We can look at his pitch feedback, make sure nothing has really changed. And from what I can tell, it hasn't. Next, we can go to this quarterback, Jeff Rogers. Look at this. He has already narrowed it down to his top five guys, so he is moving his recruiting along pretty quickly. Once he gets down to three teams, that's when we can start bringing him in for a visit. But we'll talk about that later. So while we're here, let's talk about what has changed. Do you notice this right here? Potential and discipline are available to us for some players. We can check to see some of these other ones. For example, Daniel Glover, no potential or discipline yet. Same for Davis. But I think once they get down to their top five, you'll normally end up getting information over here on potential and discipline. So potential, all that is, is how good they are about training in terms of getting affected by training. That is an off-season thing that we'll look at later on in another video. And how well they kind of progress throughout a game. It's just how good of a can they improve throughout their career. Discipline is basically just do they get in trouble more often than not. And that will be a discipline thing that we can look at once somebody gets in trouble I can't really show you. I can go ahead and show you right now. So this one, it says average. What you can do is go to rosters, and we can finally talk about this right here, program standards. So as you see here, it looks like we got a linebacker that is in trouble. I think it's going to be for this game, it appears. And you notice our uh, team interest bar, we want that to be as low as possible. And the only way to get that down is you have to discipline these kids. So here's this linebacker. Looks like, what did he do? Instead of going to an, a study group session, he decided to attend a fraternity party. That's not a big thing. And look at this. His player discipline is an A+, plus, yet he gets in trouble. So I'll quickly talk about the way I do discipline. I think I may do a separate video for this altogether. But normally what I like to do is I like to over-discipline a kid. I may go down to two games or three. Notice how quickly that bar goes down the more I discipline a player. So it's up to you how you want to do that. Again, I may do a separate video all together. But for now, let's just do one game. And this points numbers right here, this comes off your school budget. That's an off-season thing we will talk about later on. Okay, so for now, we'll just do the one game there. But that's where that discipline comes from. But it's a crapshoot. Again, what did we just look at? We looked at a player who got in trouble with A-plus discipline. So, again, I think that's all random, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so look at this cornerback. This is our next guy up. Looks like he's already narrowed his top five. We're in third place, but we're moving up at least. And we got a potential discipline and a, a discipline or a, a potential uh, rating, and we got a discipline rating. Now, one thing we need to talk about is these numbers actually change after the offseason. So do not think that you're going to notice a lot of uh, in-season players have a lot of poor discipline or average at best or uh, potential, I should say. Same with discipline as well. The biggest one is the potential. This one, you're going to see a lot of guys with poor potential. Don't worry about that. For some reason, once you get to the offseason, that'll change. But either way, that's what that is. So it looks like we're in good shape for this kid. We can look, you know, we already got the positive pitch. So we are in good shape here. Now, if we feel like we need to go above Virginia Tech, we can kind of do that if we need to. I can take points off of somebody and give it to Thomas. But for now, I'm going to leave it at 15. Let's look at our other guys we're going after. You can see this halfback. We're not going after him. Of course, our interest uh, for his interest for us went down. Here's a center that we are interested in. Nothing really changed. We're still kind of in the same spot. I'm okay with where we're at. We don't know anything new about his pitch feedback, so I'm going to leave the points as is. Next up, we got a defensive tackle, John Magruder. We're moving up his list. Apparently, the 13 points we're putting on him is good enough to move up the list, it appears. All these teams that went down... It appears that they did not use as many points or they were losing ball games. It could be anything. But it looks like we're doing just fine for this defensive tackle. We still don't know much about him through the pitch feedback, so we can still continue on. I'll leave my points on him. And Patrick Robertson, I'm pretty sure it's the last guy we decided to go after. We're moving up his list. You see right here, that's a good thing. So it looks like the points we're using and that win is more than enough to recruit him well enough to get a commitment maybe down the road. We can look here, and it looks like we gained another pitch. It looks like the new one is Patrick mentioned that he's really not concerned 
about our depth chart. That is a playing time thing. So he doesn't really care about playing time. So that's good information though. The more information you see on here, the better, because you can do a process of elimination once you get to finally be able to bring some of these kids in to take a visit. So just looking here, I'm kind of okay with, you know, one thing I may can try. I mean, I'm just kind of spitballing here. This is a four-star fullback. Looks like 12 is doing more than enough, and it looks like we're technically in second place. You notice Michigan, Virginia Tech, us, Notre Dame, and Tennessee all have the same interest level bar, so technically we're like in second, and we're not far off from Ohio State. So if I felt like it, I could go 10 points here. I think we could still recruit pretty well for him just for 10, and maybe I want to go up here to like this. Uh, let's take, for example... Uh, we can do this defensive end. How about that? I may, since it looks like Penn State's got a bit of a lead, maybe I want to put two there. It's up to you how you want to do it. Again, it's a guessing game. So I'm pretty happy with what we're done so far, and that's kind of it for week two. There's going to be a lot of weeks where you're not going to have to do a whole lot of movement. That comes later on in the, reg in the regular season. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go back out. We're going to go to play week, and we're going to go into week four and see if we need to make any more adjustments. And it appears that we have won our second game of the season. We barely scraped by Ohio, but a win is a win, and that should help us a little bit in recruiting. So let's go back to in-season recruiting and see if we need to make any more adjustments. You'll now notice we probably have some uh, players that have taken us off our list altogether. You see this kid right here, Craig Wade? He took us off his list. That means he's narrowed it to his top five, and we didn't make it, but we didn't even put points on the kid. Okay, and there's a couple other players that are just dwindling. It'll just be a matter of time before they take us off the list altogether, which is okay. But that means you get, some of these other team or other players get pushed up this list. So we can keep looking. It looks like we still haven't moved much for this Glover kid, but I have noticed that we are slowly getting a little bit closer to Penn State. I think this the gap is narrowing just a little bit. That's a good thing. We also notice that it's he has narrowed his top five. So I feel like my points that I'm using is helping just enough. He got down to his top five, and now we see a potential in discipline. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to those, again, because they kind of change. They usually get better in the offseason. But at this point, I already know I want the kid, so I have no reason to look at any more of his attributes. But it looks like we're in a really good position, but the one thing we need to look at is pitch feedback. We just don't know a whole lot about him yet. He just program prestige. He doesn't care about that, and that's kind of it. We'd like to get more feedback, but you can't force it. He'll let you know what he likes or doesn't. So let's keep going to the next one. Uh, let's look at middle linebacker uh, Josh Davis. Looks like we haven't changed here, but that's because we're already number one in his list. So we are in great shape for him. You look at his pitch feedback. We just don't know a whole lot yet. Hopefully we'll get some feedback, more of it soon. But we're in good shape there. Then you can look at this quarterback, Jeff Rogers. We're still number one in his list, and you can see this gap is really widening. We are doing a really good job here. We may be adding a little too many points on him. We can maybe move those somewhere else, but I may leave him as is. Again, you just it's up to you how you want to do that. It looks like it says he seems pretty indifferent about our style of play. That is coaching style. I think that was the sixth one. So it's program prestige, coach prestige, coach style, playing time, academics, and location. Those are the six. So, but at least we got another bit of info to work off of. So that's a good thing, but it's not a negative or positive either. But again, we're in great shape for this kid. So let's keep going. Here's a cornerback, James Thomas. We already know we have a good chance of landing this kid because we have a positive pitch. Now we just got to figure out how to catch up to Virginia Tech. As long as we end up in the top three, I'm not too worried about not being number one right now. I mean, we're still just in week four, and there's 15 weeks. There's a lot of room to grow and once he gets to his top three and we're there then we can really uh, hammer home and hopefully get a commitment out of this kid but we are in great shape here so let's go on to the next guy looks like it's this center looks like we're moving up his list again it helps you if you win your ball games and if you're putting enough points on a kid i'm guessing the win helped more than anything else we can check his pitch feedback still don't know a whole lot about him yet but it looks like 15 points is more than enough to go after this kid, which is good. So we're in great shape for him as well. So here's John Magruder, defensive tackle. Look at this. We're moving up the list. Is that because we won? Did all these uh, did Notre Dame get beat? Is that why we flipped? Or was it because 13 points is enough? Is Notre Dame only put 10 on them? Again, we don't know. That's the chance you take for putting these points on some of these kids. But it looks like we're in great shape. And again, 
We don't know a whole lot about his pitch feedback. We're just not getting that information yet. It will come in time. Last but not least, we have this fullback, Patrick Robertson. Look at this. We're moving up the list. He still has his eight. He hasn't narrowed down to his five yet. But as long as we're moving up the list and we're about to creep up to get up right up to Ohio State, which is good. We can check his pitch feedback. We know a couple things he just doesn't care about too much. So to be honest, I don't feel like I need to make any adjustments. It's up to you if you feel like you need to drop here to go to here. I mean, it's just however you want to do it. But for this example, I think I'm going to leave everything as is. And let's go ahead and go and play our next game. And we'll do some more recruiting. And it looks like we lost our first game of the season. We got beat by 13 to Nebraska. So that's going to affect our recruiting. So let's see how that is going to affect it. So we're going to go back to end season recruiting. And uh, the good news is, from what I can tell, nobody has went down on the interest level. That's a good thing, but we haven't looked at them all yet. What we can do is go down and see if we got hurt. For example, apparently that loss did not help things for going after this fullback. Plus, maybe the points didn't, is, may not be enough now. We don't know yet. But let's go back up to the very top and let's see how we are in shape with some of these other ones. So let's go to Daniel Glover. We're still number two on this list. We didn't move anywhere. And again, we just can't get much of uh, feedback from the guy. But at least we're still in the conversation. We're still in the top five. Looks like we're in great shape to be in the final three. Josh Davis, we're still number one. It looks like nothing really was affected by that loss of ours. And we got two pitches. We're just, he knows he, we don't, he doesn't really care about. And let's go to Jeff Rogers. We're still number one in his list, but we don't have a lot of good feedback yet. But it looks like that loss didn't really affect us much. Next up is cornerback. We know we got a decent chance of going after him because we have the positive pitch. Looks like we stayed firm. Everybody stayed firm. Nothing really changed for him in recruiting this week. Then you go to center, Chaz Bryan. Looks like nothing really changed. I don't even remember if we were in his, you know, if he had his top five last week or now, but at least now we got it down to his five. Just no negative or positive pitches yet. But it looks like we got a new pitch. Uh, Chaz is worried about other things other than academics, so he doesn't care about our academics. And we have a couple other guys. Defensive tackle, John Magruder. Nothing's really changed. Look at this. He still has his eight. He still can't figure out what his top five is going to be. And we're technically in second place with six other teams. But we're inching really close to being the number one team on his list. But we don't know a whole lot about him. But just for whatever reason, he doesn't give us enough information. And here's the one that we, looks like we had a little problem with, fullback. We went down his list, so it's up to us to decide, do I need to go after this kid? But look at this. We have a positive pitch. That's a big deal. If I really want this kid, I need to put some extra points on him somehow, some way. So let's do that. That positive pitch gives me enough incentive to really go after the kid. So what we can do is, for example... I can look here and I can decide I want to leave my points for this kid just because we're at the top of his list. I like to stay there. Chaz Bryan, I, I need a center badly corner. I mean, we can look at our overview and see. Like, we can do something like this. I mean, again, you can crab shoot this as many times as you need to. Like, for this defensive tackle. Maybe I just want to do something like this. We'll put those remaining four points on Robinson. And we'll just see if he reacts to it well. If he doesn't, we may have to drop him. I, you just don't know. But what this tells me is that loss, he didn't like that. Or he really liked Notre Dame a little bit more. Maybe Notre Dame is adding more points to him. Again, we just don't know. So that's the one adjustment we'll make for now. We'll put 14 points on him. Hopefully that does not affect some of these other guys. But let's pretend we got to have this fullback. There'll be some times where I may look at this kid and say, no, I'm wasting my time on him. We can do that if you want to. Maybe that was enough for me to say I don't want to bother. But if I really want him and I have a positive pitch, that tells me I have a chance to get him to commit. So I'm going to continue to go after him. So that's what we're going to do. We'll put those 14 points on him. We're done with recruiting for this week. Again, NC's recruiting, there's not a whole lot to it when you go from week to week. Not up until at least you start bringing in some kids to visit. So let's go back to play week, and let's go play this game, and we'll come back, and we will go through week six. So we are here in week five. We finished week five, and we just beat Youngstown, Youngstown State. 
that's good. That's another win that should help us a little bit in recruiting. So now we are in week six, and we're going to go back to NC's recruiting. Hopefully that win will help us a little bit. Looks like everybody's kind of staying firm. But look what happened here. Look at this fullback. Looks like those 14 or those four extra points got him up our list a little bit, which is good. So let's go up to the very top and see if we need to make any adjustments. Here's Daniel Glover. Nothing's really changed. We're still in the same spot, and we can't get anything out of the guy. But I still think we got a chance of getting him. So let's continue on. Here's middle linebacker Josh Davis. We're still well ahead here. We're probably 14 points seems to be like more than enough to go after this guy and get him to commit. We can check his pitch feedback. Looks like nothing has changed. We can go to quarterback Jeff Rogers. We're in an amazing shape for this kid. Pitch feedback, nothing's really changed, so we can keep going. James Thomas, this is the kid that we know we got a positive pitch on. Looks like Tennessee is going up the list a little bit, but we're in solid number two spot. Looks like Virginia Tech has a really good chance here. Now, somebody may think, hey, I may need to add more points on this guy just because Virginia Tech is still holding firm here. You can make that decision if you need to. Maybe you feel like you're adding too many points here and for these two guys. So let's pretend, let's just do that. I'm just spitballing here. What you can do is you can go 13, 13, and like 16 there. Or you could do 15 and 15 here, or 14 there. Again, it just whatever you feel like you need to do to get that little increase. If you feel like you need to get the Virginia Tech closer, maybe that extra point will help. You don't know until you try. Next, we got Chaz Bryant. Nothing's changed. Looks like we are deadlocked technically for first place. You look at the pitch feedback, nothing's really changed. Let's keep going. Next up, we got these two guys. Defensive tackle, nothing's changed. We're still in the top five and just not a whole lot of information on the pitch feedback. And last but not least, the fullback. We moved up the list. It was just enough to go ahead of Notre Dame and we are technically in third spot. And we got, we're getting a lot of information from this kid. But at least we know we got one positive pitch, and that's all we, we really care about at this point. So I, I don't need to make any adjustments. There's nothing I feel like I need to do. I mean, do I feel the need to add another point to this kid to maybe get closer? To me, no. I just need him to come and visit. As long as he visits and we got that positive pitch, we got a good chance of landing the kid. So I'm going to just leave that for now. What I can do is do like 14 of 14. How about we do that? That's fine. Again, is a point going to make a difference? We won't know. So we are done with this week. Let's go back, and we will simulate this game, and we will go into week seven. And it looks like we won again. We are 4-1. We're doing really well. These wins are helping us in recruiting. We won 31-28, to so we are now in week seven. Let's go back into NC's recruiting and see how that win has helped us, if any. So we've noticed a couple of different things. Looks like we went up a little for the center. We went down for the corner, and... We went up again for the fullback, so these 14 points must really help us to land this fullback. If you know, so that's pretty good. So let's go back up to the very top. Defensive end Daniel Glover. Nothing has changed. We're still stuck at number two. We can't get anything out of the kid, but looks like he's really close to wanting to commit to Penn State. But it's not a definite yet. He won't commit until he visits. So next up. Josh Davis. Now, here is where we get into making official visits. Have you noticed he has narrowed his top three? And I, I need to increase that thing. And he's narrowed his top three, which means he is ready to take a visit. So you hit your select button to invite for an official visit. So when you select the select button, you got several options. You can have him visit to any home game that is left or any buy game. Avoid the bye weeks. Not a bye game, but a bye week. Avoid the bye weeks because you need to play those games. You need to win that game that you have him come to visit. So you can go back and look like Cincinnati and South Florida. What you can do is go to like the play week and see how those teams are doing. You can look at this game info and say, hey, we have a decent chance of probably being Cincinnati. Or uh, we may have a, a, another decent chance of beating South Florida. So my strategy is when it comes to taking official visits is I like to get these out of the way as soon as possible. I like, as the sooner you get somebody to visit, the sooner they commit, which means you can use those points to put them on somebody else, which is going to make all the difference in the world. Now, I kind of noticed that Cincinnati is a little bit worse of a team than South Florida. So I'm going to go ahead and have him schedule to come to the Cincinnati game. 
which is this week. Notice what happens here. Now we have pitch information. We can decide which pitch to throw at him. Now here's the key. Look at this. We got super lucky here. He decided on the week to narrow his top three. He gave us a positive pitch. We are very fortunate as location is a main concern. That is awesome. That means we can go over to location and hopefully he will commit. That will be amazing. So that's just very lucky on our part that he decided to give us a positive pitch on the same week he is ready to visit, which is really cool. So we're going to have him come to visit today, and he will get that location pitch. Let's go on to the next one. Looks like our quarterback is ready to commit. Look at this guy. His bar, I mean, he's just ready. He's just dying to be a Panther. He is ready to take an official visit so we can schedule him. Um, like I said, I, to me, it's just easier to get this out of the way as soon as possible. Unless you're going up against a behemoth, you feel like you can't win. Here's the thing. You need to win the game that you have these kids coming to. If you lose, it makes it super hard for you to get them to commit. It's You can still get them to commit. I'm just telling you, winning is a very important when it comes to getting these guys to commit to you. That's why I want to select Cincinnati over South Florida. If Cincinnati was an A-plus overall team, then I may have them come for the South Florida game, or maybe Syracuse if these two teams were awesome. But for now, in our scenario, Cincinnati's not that good, so I'm going to take the chance that we can beat them. We'll have him come today. Let's look at his pitch feedback. The first one says it does appear he's too worried about education, so we know academics is something he doesn't care about. Then it says he seems pretty indifferent to our style of play, which is coaching style. I can go ahead and tell you, since you're we are a four-star program, anytime you're about three stars and up, in terms of these players, most of them tend to care about program prestige is usually the most popular for the high-profile kids or coach prestige. Location is usually one for uh, a player that's not as talented. But as we just saw earlier, look at this Josh Davis kid. He's a top 50 player. He likes location. So th this isn't set in stone. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up of kind of what to expect. If you can't figure out what pitch he likes, my gut tells me I'm going to go ahead and do coach uh, program prestige. One thing you can do is look at this right here. Look at the uh, teams he's go looking at. Tennessee and Michigan. I can go ahead and tell you that Tennessee and Michigan are six-star programs. That tells me he's probably in the program prestige or probably coach prestige. I'll take the guess and say it's program prestige and hope for the best that he commits anyways. Okay? Now let's go on to the next one. For whatever reason, this quarterback, we moved down just a little bit. You notice Tennessee is putting a lot of extra oomph into their recruiting on this kid. But we're still at number three. Now one thing we can do is we can add a couple more points to help us because the biggest thing is to stay in the top three for this kid. And it looks like Georgia is on the move. You can tell a lot of some of these big-time teams really want this kid. So I need to decide if I need to put extra points on him. I think I'm going to. We'll just need to figure out where we're going to put those. So let's just go on forward. Again, we already know our pitch feedback. We got the one positive pitch for him. Let's look at this center. Now we are number one on his list. That is great. Great position to be in. We can check his pitch feedback. Just not a whole lot to see here. But we're in great shape. Let's look at these last two guys. Defensive tackle. We're still number two for this kid. We got a really good chance. We're close with Penn State. As long as there really isn't a negative pitch, I'm not too scared. And right now, we just don't know a whole lot about him. So I'm going to leave it as is for now. And then here's Patrick Robinson. Look at this. We're about to be number one on his list with Ohio State. We're technically tied for that spot. Pitch feedback. We know we already got a positive pitch. That's a good thing. So now it just comes down to, for me, all I have left to do is figure out how I want to put these points on this cornerback. I feel like we need to add to something, add some points to him from somewhere. It looks like we're not budging for this defensive end. I, you kind of have to decide what you're going to do. It's going to be kind of tough. I may do 13 points off of this kid and maybe do 12 for here. Again, you're crap shooting at this point. Let's put these two points on the corner. Let's see if that helps a little bit. Okay, so now we're done with this week. When we come back, we're going to go and simulate this game. Hopefully we win, and if we do, then we will see if we get any commitments or not. And here we are. We have simulated our Cincinnati game. I can go ahead and tell you we won. And this one happens when you get a player to commit after a game. It'll bring up this commit screen, and it'll show you which players committed. So Jeff Rogers visited. He committed along with Josh Davis, the middle linebacker. 
which is great. Now you can go and hit the select button to check out the prospect info, and it'll tell you. You can see that little sense. I think playing in Pittsburgh was clearly a deciding factor for him. That's just a little nugget that doesn't really affect anything. The biggest thing is he is now a Pitt Panther. You can go up and look at his uh, quarterback. Our prestige probably had a lot to do with his signing. And it looks like we picked the right one. It says our prestige. Yeah, it says what we just read uh, just a minute ago. So it looks like program prestige ended up working out for us. That was just a strong guess. Thankfully, it went in our favor. So we got two commitments. So what this means, again, you notice we got uh, the win over Cincinnati. And now let's go to NC's recruiting. And we got quite a few points to play with because once you get a couple players to commit, that means they will, they're down here. You saw it, you notice it's zero points for these two guys. That means we can now use their points to put them on somebody else. That's big for us. Now we can go in here and really recruit the remaining uh, of these players. And it looks like we're down to five guys. And we got 28 extra points to play with, which is excellent. So we are in really good shape recruiting. So let's go up at the very top. And let's look at Daniel Glover. Looks like we are dead tied with Penn State, and he is ready to take an official visit. Again, we can look at South Florida and Syracuse and see which one's the worst of the two. They are back-to-back -back games, so I don't think, if for whatever reason we feel like we need to have him come to the Syracuse game, I don't think we're going to get hurt too bad by this one. Another big reason why I like to uh, get these visits in early is because what if Penn State gets ahead of you? They may get him to commit. So get them out of the way as early as you possibly can. So what we can do is go back and look at both teams and see what we're dealing with. So South Florida, they are 3-2. and two. They're C-plus overall. And then you have 3-2 and two Syracuse, which is B-minus overall. That's probably enough for me to say, hey, let's just go ahead and schedule anybody who wants to visit for the next home game, which just happens to be today, this particular week. So let's go ahead and have him schedule and come to visit for the South Florida game. So we're going to go back to NC's recruiting. We're going to go to Daniel Glover, and let's have him come for today. Now, we got to pick a, pre a pitch for him to hopefully he will like and go forward. So we only know one thing. He doesn't care too much about program prestige. So that's not a whole lot to go off of. So this will be a really big guessing game. We can look at Penn State. And Virginia Tech, what does that mean? Is that based off coach prestige? This is when uh, Frank Beamer was a Virginia Tech. That's when Joe Paterno was a Penn State. Maybe it is a coach prestige thing. So that's what I'm going to take a guess on. Because, again, program prestige and coach prestige tend to be some of the more popular pitches for these high-profile guys. So let's do coach prestige. Let's go to this corner. Looks like we stayed put at number three, but I'm really wanting him to kind of narrow down to his three and hopefully we can make it. And we're definitely going to put some points on him. And hopefully for the best, we already got our positive pitch. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Let's move on to the next guy. We're still number one for this Chaz. Brian, we, if you remember, we took off a couple of points of him and put it on the corner. It looks like it didn't really hurt anything from what I can tell. Everybody kind of stood firm. Look at the pitch feedback. We still don't know anything about him, so we're fine there. Then you got this defensive tackle. We're dead set at number one, technically, tied with Penn State. Pitch feedback. Just don't know a whole lot about him, so let's just keep going. And then the fullback. It's a four-way tie for number one for this kid. But good thing is we got a positive pitch that tells us we got a good chance of getting him. So now all that's left is to throw these points on a bunch of other players. We got five left. There's 25. So let's just go ahead. And I'm going to do five for everybody here for now. And then we're going to go, we'll put 19 here. We'll do 17. And then we'll do 18 here. And that gives us three extra points to play with. I think it's in our best interest to put a, probably two here. Just because it looks like Tennessee and Virginia Tech are really fighting for us over this kid. Or fighting with us over him. Then you got this center. I think we're fine. And we put enough points on him already. Just now. Same with this defensive tackle. I think we're in good shape with a lot of these guys, except for maybe these two. These are the two that we are kind of battling for. So we got one point left. Let's just go ahead and put it on Glover. That gives us 23 points for Glover and for Thomas. So now we're done, again, with end season recruiting for this week. So what we can do is go back and let's simulate this week, and hopefully we will get a commitment from that corner. And we have won the game against South Florida, which is good. 
but we did have somebody come in to visit and they didn't come in otherwise i'd show you that screen now i think i misspoke it wasn't the cornerback who came to visit it was we can go back and look i'm pretty sure it was the center who came to visit no it wasn't him was it Oh, which one was? I already forgot which one was. Maybe we didn't have anybody. Oh, it was Glover. I'm sorry. Oh, it's my bad. Yeah, it was Glover who came and visited. We're going to look at that here in a little bit. So let's look at the overview of kind of what happened here. We moved up for Glover. We moved up for the corner, which is good. We kind of stayed firm for the other three guys, mainly because we were already number one on the list, kind of sorted to begin with. Well, I'll take that back. Well, I guess we were still number two for him and number two for the fullback. So everybody is narrowing down their choices. So... Even though you add a lot of these points, it doesn't mean you're automatically going to go up on some of these. So let's go up to the very top, the Glover. This says it is a soft verbal. He visited. Apparently, what we pitched him wasn't good enough. And now we are just at the mercy of him picking us. He still probably hasn't visited Penn State yet, which doesn't help us. I'm sure they'll do fine giving him a good pitch of some sort. We just kind of get lucky and hope that he will commit. So just because it's a soft verbal doesn't mean that it's done. That means once a, a game is over with, a week is over, he may commit, and we will find that out shortly. Let's look at this corner. He is now ready to take a visit. We At least we made his top three. That was my biggest concern. I was getting a little worried that Georgia was going to sneak up there. But we are now firmly number two. Let's have him come to Syracuse because if we don't have him come today, we definitely can't put him on a bye week. We will lose that commitment just because you want to see those kids watch you play. So don't ever do bye weeks. That means the only other option we have is the UConn game. And that's a th four weeks. Because look at this. This is week 9, week 10. Then you got week 11 and week 12. So that's like a full month out. By then, he'll probably have visited the other two teams. And he'll probably commit to one of them. So again, earlier the better. So let's have him come to the Syracuse game. Thankfully, we already have a positive pitch. He respects me as a coach, which means he likes coach prestige. So we should get a commitment from him today, hopefully. Okay, let's go to this center. Looks like he is ready to take a visit. We can look at his pitch feedback. We don't know anything yet, but I'm going to go ahead and have him come to the Syracuse game. I am not waiting a full month for him to visit at the UConn game. So let's go ahead and do Syracuse. And let's see here. Near or far, he doesn't care about location. And looks like he doesn't care about academics. So Florida, Florida State, it may be a location thing for him. Well, I'll take that back. It doesn't like location. <laughs> Never mind. Let's just go with program prestige just because Florida and Florida State are six-star programs. So I'm going to take the guess that he's like program prestige. Just make sure I've done that correctly. Okay. Now, defensive tackle, he still can't figure out his top three, but we're in good shape. We don't know much about him, though. He still can't make up his mind what he even likes. And then we got fullback Patrick Robinson. We do got the positive pitch. He just hasn't narrowed down his three. So we are still in great shape for these five guys. It just kind of comes down to can these guys commit, especially the Glover kids since he's already visited. So I can decide if I need to move a point around or two. I still I don't want to lower points for this kid because we're not even in first place. We're not in first place for this fullback. We're in good shape here. I think through the visit today, we may get this kid to commit. And hopefully 23 points is enough for the defensive end. So in my opinion, I'm going to leave all these points as is. And we're going to go on to the next week. And hopefully we're going to land some commitments off of this game. And look at this. We got both commitments. We got the cornerback he visited today, James Thomas. We pitched him the one that he really liked. And it seemed to be enough. And then the center also visited, Chaz Bryan. That's a big thing for us. We got the, a big need at center. So that's two more commitments, which means those are points we could put on other players. So, and we won the ball game. It's helping that we are winning ball games. I can't stress enough how big of a deal it is to actually win ball games. It just makes everything easier for you across the entire dynasty in general. So next we are in week 10. It's a bye week. This is bye week is going to hurt us a little bit. But let's go to recruiting and see what we got to deal with. So now we got 42 points to spare. What we So we got three guys left. So what we can do for now, I'm going to go like 34, 33, and 33, and I'll adjust it again if need be. We're going to look at all three of them for now. Let's go up to the very top. So Daniel Glover, he still can't make up his mind. I do not know if he has visited Penn State and Virginia Tech yet. My guess is if he had visited Penn State already, he probably would have committed, and he hasn't. 
you just don't know. You can't go back and look and see where he uh, visited, especially if you are the first one that he visits. And now if you back on the way on the like a month later and have him visit, then you can see where he may have scheduled a visit to Penn State, Virginia Tech. But we didn't see that. So all we can do now is hope for the best. At least we added some points to him. So here's his defensive tackle. This is actually a good thing. It looks like we are now officially tied with Penn State. So I like what I'm seeing there. And unfortunately, we just don't know a whole lot about what he likes. So last but not least, we got this fullback. He is now ready to take a visit. He's finally narrowed it to his top three, Ohio State, Pitt, and Michigan. We know that he likes, it says he likes the fact that we are known for our football program. That is a program prestige pitch. So we're going to have him visit the UConn game. Again, do not schedule for bye weeks unless you have no choice, which is possible because if you run out of home games, you got no choice but to schedule them for a bye week. But try to avoid those at all costs. So all we can do is have him come for the UConn game, which unfortunately is a few weeks out. So we'll have him come for that game. Now it just kind of decides, do you need to do something like this? Maybe I really want this defensive end. Maybe we can do something like that. We can try that. Again, it's just a bit of a guessing game. It all depends on what you really want. Okay, so we're going to go 40-30-30. And it's possible Glover may commit after... The, he probably won't commit after the bye week. Because here's what you're going to see. We're going to simulate this bye week, and you're going to see how this is going to affect recruiting. So we just went through our bye week. Now let's see how badly that hurts us in recruiting. Let's go to NC's recruiting. And it looks like it didn't affect us. Thank the Lord it didn't. Otherwise, you would probably be seeing some, like, down arrows. It happens all the time when you have a bye week. If you don't play, these kids want you to play. But thankfully, that didn't happen. Let's go up to the very top. Looks like this Glover kid, I don't I don't think he's ready to commit anywhere. He may not commit to anybody. I, he will. But for whatever reason, he's taking his sweet time. It doesn't matter what we look at pitch-wise because he's already visited, so it doesn't make a difference what we look at right here. But at least we're number one on the list. Then you got this defensive tackle. Apparently 30 points is still, I think he's torn. Kind of what this looks like to me is like, I really want to go to Penn State, but man, Pittsburgh is really showing me a lot of love. I don't know what to do. Now that's just me spitballing. I have no clue, but we do know he still hasn't narrowed it to his top three. And at least he gave us a little bit extra info in terms of pitch feedback. But all I can do is just leave it at 30 for now, unless something weird here with this fullback. Thankfully, looks like he probably visited Ohio State. Either that or Ohio State just played a game. That's why they moved back up a little bit. But he hasn't committed yet. So, And again, we got a positive pitch that still gives us a chance to get him to commit. So there's nothing that I personally want to change here. So we're going to go back to play week, and we're going to take on Louisville, and hopefully we get that win, and hopefully that will help us in recruiting. And if you notice here, we got beat by Louisville. This is our second loss of the season. This may hurt us in recruiting. Losses never help in recruiting, I'll tell you that much. So let's see what the damage is. Hopefully it's not too bad. So let's go back to NC's recruiting. And it hurt us big time. Look what happened here. That loss cost us Daniel Glover. He decided to go to Penn State. If we would have beat Louisville, maybe he would have went here. Who knows? But that didn't help us any. And Patrick Robinson... He decided to go to Ohio State. You know what hurt us? If you go back, if you remember, we had him scheduled for the UConn game. The problem is, look where we had him scheduled for this game right here, but we scheduled him during the bye week. Guess what? I guarantee you Ohio State had him scheduled for that week right there or something. Who knows what? Either way, we didn't land the fullback. So that's going to happen. So you go back here, and a loss can really hurt you. Losing the fullback and losing uh, the big five-star defensive end. The one positive that comes from this is, look, we got one guy left to go after. And that means he's going to get all of our points. He's going to get every single one of them. We only got one guy left to go after. Everybody else either has already committed, these four players right here, or have committed elsewhere. And you can go back and look at some feedback. I didn't read this. Maybe it says he committed elsewhere to spot liking your prestige. So that's a rare occurrence where we had a positive pitch and he still didn't commit because we just didn't get him to come to visit in time. That's just bad luck on our part. You can look at the defensive end. He said prestige had little to do with him choosing to go elsewhere. So who knows what pitch he liked. The problem is 
we never got enough info from the guy. So it just didn't work out for us, unfortunately. But again, the one positive is you could put those points somewhere else, and we're down to literally one guy, John Magruder, a defensive tackle. Looks like it's Penn State and Pittsburgh. It's a Pennsylvania battle for this kid. We just don't know what he likes, but at least we're going to put the full court press on the guy. So that's all we got to do. We just have to wait for him to narrow down to his top three. The problem is, look at this. We got one game at home left. So he's going to come for a bye week. It would have been perfect if he was ready to visit today, but he is not. So all we can do is have him come for a bye week. But we will schedule, we will simulate this game, and let's see if we can try to snag that last commitment. Okay, we have beaten UConn handedly 45-14. And now we are in another bye week. It's just a bad time to be recruiting players, especially since we have run out of home games. So let's go back to end season recruiting. And we are down to one guy. We are putting everything we can on this kid. We moved up. And he's ready to take a visit. Finally, the problem is we don't have any home games left. So we got to pick one of them. You might as well do the earliest as possible. We'll go with week 13, which is today. We just don't know what he likes. Play at time and majors. He, is, he doesn't have a clue what he wants to major in. So that's an academic thing. But there's not a positive pitch to either one of those. So what we can do, we can, he's got Tennessee on that list. Let's just do program prestige and see if that's a big deal for him. So we'll go program prestige. And that's it. We're only down to one guy, so there's not much left to do. So we're going to go back to play week, and we're going to simulate the buy and pray that this is enough to get him to commit. My guess is it probably won't, but let's see what happens. And as you can see, we finished our bye week in week 13, and we're ready to play West Virginia. But have you noticed anything? There is no commit screen that popped up. That means that he didn't like what he saw. Biggest thing is we didn't have a game to show off our stuff to him. So it's a soft verbal at this point. I don't know if he has already visited Penn State or Tennessee, but if we would have played a game that week at home, we probably would have gotten his commitment. So it says his parents want him to talk about, uh, take all his visits before making a decision. So now we got nothing to do. We're going to do 100 points on this kid until he makes his decision. So let's go back. We got one game left. We need to win this one, and hopefully that'll convince him to commit. And here we are. He did decide to commit. 100 points was enough, and what helped is that we beat West Virginia. If we would have lost, my guess is he probably would have committed to Penn State. So that's a big pickup for us, a big four-star defensive tackle. So you go back to end season recruiting, and we are done. There's nothing else for us to do. Everybody has either committed to us or is looking at somewhere else. Everybody else looks like they've already committed to other teams. So look who we have got to commit throughout this first season. we got a four-star quarterback, a four-star middle linebacker, a four-star corner, a four-star center, and a four-star defensive tackle. I'll go ahead and tell you, just going after those eight guys initially really paid off. We went out and got five solid players. That's good for us. That means if you take that number 51 down here at the very bottom and you take add five to that, that means we got 56 players coming, which means we got 14 spots left. So that's 14 spots in the offseason which that'll be in the next video. So all you have left to do at this point is to finish out the rest of your season. So what we're going to do is I'm going to simulate the rest of this. You're going to see that at the beginning of the next video because the next video, we're going to cover all of off-season recruiting, just the basics. I'll try to cover some strategy along the way, but hopefully this video shows you kind of what in-season recruiting looks like, the ups and downs that come with it, how simple it really is. There's not a whole lot of depth that comes to it. Only real depth in general, it comes to how you want to distribute points because I can go ahead and tell you the most uh, amount of commitments I've got in the regular season is nine. Five's a great number. I'll take that any day of the week, but I have been able to get nine commitments before. There's just a lot of ways to go about doing it, but at least now you know how in season recruiting works, kind of how to go about doing it. And now you have a better understanding of how to pick up some extra players in the end season before you get to the real fun stuff, which is the off season. So come on back in our next video. We will cover off season recruiting. A whole lot of fun there, and I can't wait to get into it. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.